Okay, and we are live. ¿Qué tal, amigos? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with yet another live stream Saturday evening, 7.30 p.m., coming to you from the outskirts of Madrid, Spain's current capital. And, of course, we're going to have a look at some of the stories that have caught my attention today in the press, some comments that have been left on the channel recently. Then in the second half of the video, we'll go into the chat section and check out what is bubbling away in that chat section. Now, before I begin, I'll put the like icon on the screen. If you haven't hit the like icon yet, please do so just below the video. Whether you are watching on Facebook or YouTube this evening, you will find that like button. So hit it, please. Now, into the news I go. And the first thing is that there is an agreement, finally, between the parties to the left of the PSOE left party, if that makes sense. So parties even more to the left have reached an agreement with the name Sumad to present themselves in the next elections as candidates around the country. As we can see here, Sumar will take part in the 23rd of March, sorry, 23rd of July elections, that should be, with Podemos and 14 other parties without Irene Montero on the lists. There is an agreement in the next general elections. There will only be one ballot that brings together the left-wing parties to the left of the PSOE. Sumar has registered this Friday with the Electoral Board, the coalition, to run together with Podemos and 14 other parties on the 23rd of July. They do so just four hours before the deadline to present a coalition and a week of, and a week of and after a week of dizzying negotiations, leaks and cross accusations. Sumar will present itself with the second vice president, Yolanda Diaz, as candidate, and together with Podemos, Compromis, Mas Madrid, and Izquierda Unida, among others. This is the broadest and most pluralistic agreement reached in the entire democratic period in Spain between progressive and green forces the platform claims claims in a statement. So there we go. Podemos, Sumar uh, being joined, sorry, Sumar being joined uh, by Podemos and 14 other parties. So 14 other parties there to the left of the PSOE finally reaching an agreement, as I said before, and um, getting it to, together before the elections that are going to take place, as we know, on the 23rd of July. And uh, what are these 14 parties made up of? Well, as we saw there, they're uh, green groups. They are progressive politics groups. They are animal rights groups. They are um, basically well, communist groups as well. Anybody who considers themselves to be left of left here in Spain uh, at a political level has joined that party Sumar. So there we go. So we'll see how they go and uh, whether the internal problems that they uh, that we have seen in recent times over the last week or so, uh, it will see whether they calm down or whether they become a, an interrupting force in this political uh, group, let's say. And of course, without in any Montero, uh, Montero, who's the equality minister, and uh, she's not very popular amongst the uh, left. They think she is uh, dead politically. Podemos doesn't think so. Podemos thinks that she is still the number one uh, political weapon that they have. But uh, Sumar, lots of parts of uh, Sumar don't agree with that. So we'll see. Without in any Montero, but Podemos has said that they're going to keep on negotiating uh, over the next few weeks to see if they can get at any a position on that list. So we'll see. Now, the next piece of news today, this one here, Spanish supermarkets want to guarantee that strawberries that the strawberries they sell do not harm the Doniana wetland. Something has been stirring in the offices of the small Spanish supermarket chains this winter. Sorry, a big Spanish supermarket chains this winter. Strawberries at the epicentre of the environmental controversy and political wrangling over the deadline of Doniana have been at the centre of environmental and sustainably conscious consumers' protests for a year and a half since the PP and Vox launched their first bill in the Andalusian parliament to expand irrigation next to the reserve and these green complaints are beginning to take hold. The food chains have seen that the share of consumers who do not want to damage the environment with their shopping basket is growing and most have followed the lead of the European ones in demanding that Welva's strawberry producers prove that they are not contributing to the drying up of the valuable wetlands. So this has become a real political topic, the topic of strawberries and the water that is used to uh, feed these strawberries 
down there in the Doniana region, down there uh, in Huelva, or the Huelva province, uh, on the outskirts of Doniana. Of course, the Partido Popular and Vox wanting more irrigation for this industry. But German uh, consumers and supermarket chains have been warned, and now Spanish uh, supermarkets apparently doing the same thing. But it's also an internal debate here in Spain between the left and the right. The strawberry has become the hot political potato, if you like, and uh, with the left uh, trying to protect Doniana, or at least saying that they're trying to protect it, haven't really done much over the last few decades, and of course the right-wing parties uh, trying to promote growth in that area, and strawberries and strawberry growing is one way to promote growth, they think. And the third piece of news today, foreign tourism and falling exports save Spain from Eurozone technical recession. The growth of the Spanish economy in the last two quarters has been possible thanks to the phenomena decided outside its borders. So much, uh, so much so that, had it not been for the appetite for spending by foreign tourists at the start of the year and the drop in imports at the end of 2022, Spain would have entered a technical recession, as happened to the euro area this week. The factors behind the significant advance of the Spanish economy in the last six months were generated outside the country. In fact, domestic demand, the spending and investment generated within the state, has fallen sharply in the last two quarters and has not only failed to contribute but has actually detracted from the economy's growth. So there we go, the economy uh, moving along slowly, avoiding a technical recession thanks to foreign tourism and uh, less imports coming into the country. Uh, but don't believe what the government is saying at the moment, that the Spanish economy is uh, moving along like a fast motorbike, como una moto, which is what the Prime Minister has been quoted as saying in recent times, that everything's fantastic when it comes to the economy, because the fact of the matter is that the Spanish economy has been slow ever since COVID hit. And compared to other European uh, economies, or Euro economies, for example, Ireland, uh, the growth here is nothing compared to Ireland over the last three years or so. So yes, we have avoided recession, but uh, no, the economy, well, it's moving along slowly, but uh, don't listen to what the Prime Minister says. Now we'll move into the comment section, check out what is happening there now. The first one that uh, caught my attention is this one here. Uh, from Paul, if doing a short-term rent, for example, nine to ten months, do you still need to pay agency fees? We are having uh, two for our winter let. Now, I think, Paul, that all real estate in this country, all rented real estate in this country, if it's uh, through an agency, there's no more agency fees. I don't think it matters how long the term of your rental agreement is for. I don't know. I think that would be the case. Uh, if you are going to the market to real estate offices to get this property, they can't charge you that uh, rental fee anymore, which uh, for years was in place. As we saw the other day, you would pay a month in advance, you would pay uh, a monthly uh, deposit, and you would also have to pay a monthly uh, the same amount to the real estate agents for having that property uh, listed uh, on their books. But that has changed. The government uh, has changed that. But uh, we also saw the other day that some uh, dodgy real estate uh, characters here are still trying to charge people, saying that it doesn't apply to them. So be careful. But again, if anybody has better information there for Paul, please let him know. But I would say that it's all rental uh, rental uh, units that uh, are on um, you know on the market at the moment, except the ones that are on the platforms like uh, Booking and Airbnb. If it's a long term rental, longer than six months, I think that would be the case. But again. We'll uh, see if we can get some better feedback in the chat and comment section. Thanks for that. Another one here from Joe. Hunting dogs in land that are the worst treated. Uh, so very sad they are not included in the new rules. Yeah, we saw this the other day about the new animal law, how domestic dogs are included, domestic animals. So dogs, not only dogs, cats as well rabbits, uh, hamsters, other types of uh, domestic uh, animals, pets if you like, 
but uh, hunting uh, animals were excluded, hunting dogs. And uh, Joe pointing out there that they're the worst treated. And I think that's the general consensus around the country, at least. That's what a lot of people think, that hunting dogs and farm animals, farm dogs, for example, are not very well treated, but they have been excluded from that law. Uh, the animal uh, or the hunting lobbies uh, pressured the uh, coalition government, the Pessoa side of that coalition government, and they excluded it from that uh, new law. So uh, it is a shame, but that's the power of lobbies as we know, not only here, but uh, plenty of other powerful lobbies uh, making things happen that really shouldn't happen, right? Another one here from uh, Joe Bloggs, dogs are dogs, hunting or otherwise, the same rule applies across the board, shame on those hunting lobbies. Yes, Joe, absolutely, uh, re reiterating what I just said, and that is true, dogs should be dogs. But then again, I don't live in a small town, I don't hunt. Some people would say it's easy when you, sit, when you live in a city to uh, make these comments without really uh, knowing what's going on, but from what I've seen, some images that I have seen and some press that pops up every now and again and the general treatment of uh, some dogs that are used uh, in hunting and also when it comes to farming, things could improve. Things could improve, but thanks anyway for that comment, Joe. Larry, absolutely correct about ID cards in Spain. And again, this is related to a comment that somebody left uh, regarding the digital certificates and the uh, and uh, saying that maybe we need to cut back on how much the government knows about us because I was promoting people getting the digital, uh, digital certificate just because when it comes to doing bureaucratic tasks or getting anything done, it's a lot easier if you have one of these certificates. You just go online, uh, your computer registers uh, you in the system and away you go. You can get appointments, you can do lots of things with that digital certificate that will save you time having to queue up and do it the traditional way. Um, and uh, when it comes to being uh, controlled by the government here, uh, everybody has an ID card uh, since the day that they are born, almost. I think it's one of the first things that uh, children get when they're just uh, little babies. They get their ID card and their ID number, which they have for the rest of their lives. And of course, when you are a foreigner in this country, you have a foreigner's card, the uh, TIE card, I think it's called. Tarjeta de extranjero, and uh, you have to carry it everywhere you go, basically. Everywhere you go, you have to carry this card. So uh, unlike in Australia where there's no ID card, you only have a driver's license or a passport or some type of ID like that, everybody here has a little ID card with your picture on it and your fingerprint on the back, if I'm not mistaken. But I don't have mine here to have a look, but I think the fingerprint is on the back. Another one here from uh, Rain, Raindel Nord. It's pronounced Mau, referring to the beer, I think. Mau is how you pronounce it. And I think he's talking about this what beer here, which is not pronounced as suggested in that comment as Mau. It's pronounced Mau. Mau. So if you go to a bar and you want that beer specifically here in Spain, if you're in Madrid, for example, and Mao is everywhere, una Mao por favor, una Mao, and you'll get one. If you say Mao, they won't even know what you're talking about. This one here from TJ, your political and weather discussion is a big reason why I'm here. It's very enjoyable listening to your commentary. Keep it up. Thank you very much, TJ. Had someone the other day say that uh, my political and weather discussion was so boring they would rather stick pins in their eyes than listen to it and uh, tr telling me to change the content, talk about other things. I don't know what else to talk about. If you want to watch somebody on a beach down there in Benidorm walking along filming people talking about how busy the bars are, go for it. But here we talk about these things, different things, of course, not limited to politics, but when there's interesting political times like we have at the moment, uh, that's what we're going to be talking about. And of course, the weather, because uh, we like to talk about the weather. So thank you very much for that. And uh, glad you enjoy TJ, the content. Now, I'm going to change the uh, backdrop in just the tick, 14 minute mark. I'm going to uh, go through a little bit faster than I, than I would normally do. I've got to go out uh, in, a, in, a, in a while. So I need to get through this today. So I'll change the backdrop. And this one here was sent in from... Marianne, who is a regular contributor with uh, her photos up there in the Basque country. don't know whether Marianne uh, lives up in the Basque country or not, but 
lots of uh, interesting photos sent through and a sunset here of uh, the coast up there in the Bay of Biscayne up there in the Basque Country. Thanks, Marianne, for sending that one through. And this is the email address. If you've got a similar picture, spainspeaks at gmail.com is the address. Send them uh, through to this. Or if you've got a story or something that you would like me to uh, highlight on the channel, that's the address to send it through too. So feel free to do that. Now, the like icon back on the screen as well, just coming up here now. If you haven't hit it yet, we're up to 58. So maybe like number 60 or 70, you will be if you hit that like button now. So consider it, please. Facebook, YouTube, wherever you're watching this video. Well, there's only two channels where you can watch it, YouTube or Facebook. So uh, hit it, please. Just below the video, you will find it. Now into the chat section, uh, I will go. Let me scroll up to the top. Check out what's happening here. Bit of action here. Let's see if we can get through the chat today. Barbara coming in from the Playa Flamenca. 30 degrees today. Getting hotter, Barbara. Getting hotter. I reckon that uh, it's uh, sunny days ahead, uh, even though there is a, 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 a rainy uh, uh, summer forecast, I think. So we'll keep an eye on that. But uh, I think from now on, the weather's going to be uh, more often good than bad, I would say, now that these uh, rains are out of the way. Not good for the dams, but uh, good for people that like uh, fine weather. Zach and Ella coming in from a cloudy Vancouver, 11 degrees Celsius there today. Fantastic program, they say. Uh, programa fantastico. Thank you very much for that, uh, Zach and Ella. Uh, Sani coming in from Basingstoke in, in the United Kingdom. 31 degrees there today. Very warm, I imagine, for Basingstoke. 31 degrees. If you said 31 to an Aussie, they'd go, yeah, it's not a bad day. But if you said 31 degrees to a person from England, they'd say, hot. Exactly. Exactly. Jack's coming in from a, a cold Johannesburg, the Southern Hemisphere uh, winter, of course. Stephen coming in from Wales. Keep up the good work, mate. Thank you very much, uh, Stephen, for that. Enjoying a nice glass of red, no doubt, at this time or very soon, I imagine, Stephen, right? Marianne coming in as well uh, from uh, the United States, San Diego to be exact. Wishing us a good smoke-free, lovely day. Yeah, no smoke here. I saw uh, New York and other parts of that tri-state area in the United States affected by Canadian uh, bushfires, I think, the smoke coming down from Canada and uh, affecting the air quality in New York. Not sure what the uh, situation is like currently, but the last few days haven't been good uh, in that part of the world. Lots of people doing it tough, especially people with uh, uh, respiratory uh, problems or breathing problems, let's say. Uh, Grant coming in from Seattle. Cloudy there, a.k.a. old guy doing stuff, Grant, uh, from uh, Asturias. Regular viewer is Grant. Good to see you again. Richard coming in from uh, Pizarra in Malaga. Glorious, 31. Been to Mercadona and noticed a new line, the Governor White Wine. Uh, got a bottle chilling down for tomorrow. Well, I reckon, Richard, that after the publicity that we've given the Governor, the red uh, variety on this channel, they probably decided to, to, to bring a white one out as well, considering that the demand had uh, skyrocketed after we spoke about the uh, Governor on this channel. <laughs> four or five people have sent me pictures of their uh, governor purchases and that's uh, the people that have sent me photos imagine how many people would have uh, uh, got themselves a bottle of the governor uh, not only here but in the uk as well where i think it's also on sale i could be wrong but i think it's on sale but it is a mercadona special and uh, uh, people like it so we'll let us know what the white is like richard the white governor amanda coming in from shropshire uh, in the United Kingdom also. Tony coming in from a sunny Ashford, 29 degrees there, coming to Spain uh, next week for some cooler weather. Yeah, that's exactly right, uh, Tony. Get out of that uh, uh, heat wave uh, that is the United Kingdom at the moment or some parts of it, 29 degrees. Wow. Janet coming in from Oxford, uh, thundery, and the dog is shaking. Yeah, the dogs don't like the thunder. They don't like fire crackers my dog probably yours is the same janet hope you are well ch coming in from north london beautiful there at the moment thank you very much for that uh, ch pat coming in from galifia thanks for all the work thanks pat for uh, watching 
Had another regular visitor up there, up there in uh, another viewer, sorry, up there in Galicia. Pauline coming in from Rojales, which is on the uh, in the Valencian community, I think. I think uh, Ricardo is coming in from a cold Cape Town. We saw a cold uh, Johannesburg earlier, Cape Town now, another South African city, of course. Alan coming in from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, on the way to Ireland, and then El Puerto. Of course, Alan has his family reunion, I think, in Ireland coming up soon. So hope all that go- hope that goes well. Erica coming in from a half-covered terraza. Orange warning for heavy rains and or half. We'll see what will happen. Hope everyone is well. Yes, yeah, they're waiting for the rain. It seems very... Te- the rain seems to tease in that part of uh, uh, Spain, uh, Erica, right? There's always a warning, but don't think anything uh, much has arrived up until now. Jose Antonio coming in from the royal city, Ciudad Real. Uh, it's not really a, a royal city, but it's called the royal city. I don't think they have a king or a queen living there, but they've got the name. Uh, what else? Let's have a look. Summer is coming, says Jose Antonio. That's why I thought, yes, summer is coming. Thank you very much, Jose Antonio, for that. Uh, John, the traveling wino. Uh, keep up the political commentary. Thanks, John. I'm planning on it. But... Uh, Sometimes the naysayers, they, uh, you know, they leave those comments there. You know, they'd like to, they'd like me to just talk about if the bars are busy or if the beer is cold. You know, if the weather's uh, nice and warm, if the water's warm down there on the Mediterranean. That's what some people would like. Fourteen uh, other parties says Marianne. Absolutely, yep. Yeah, uh, uh, I'm uh, pretty difficult to believe. 14 parties joining together, and we'll see how long they stay together because I think history will tell us that uh, uh, political groups, when they join together, especially 14, there's a lot of different points of view. You know, they agree on some things, they disagree on others, and to find consensus, very, very difficult. I think it's going to be for that party. And, of course, the fact that Podemos has been almost erased from the political uh, scene by a person who was promoted uh, by that uh, political party in the first place. Yolanda Díaz was put uh, into a position uh, by Podemos, and now she is manoeuvring them out of the way. So a real power shift, and we'll see how long it lasts. We'll see. Uh, Gigi, coming in from Manzanares, a small village about 50 or 50 miles north of Madrid. What's that, about 80 kilometres north of Madrid? Two days walk, the village has a castle. Yeah, it does, uh, Gigi. Good to see that you've got your backpack and uh, you're on your way. Did you walk up there or did you, or did you, did you catch a bus uh, somewhere from the centre of Madrid? Because I'm going to say if you tried to walk there, uh, I don't know what the, uh, the route would be like, considering the amount of traffic getting out of, around Madrid. Kirk coming in from Florida, hoping everyone is well. Hello, Kirk. Yes, we are 32 degrees Celsius there in the southwest of Florida. Good to see you. Jan coming in from South London, 30 degrees there today. So that's uh, hot weather in uh, South London. Although we want the weather to stick around for at least another day or so to see if we can get a result in the important cricket game that's happening at the Oval there in London. So we'll see. Ed coming in from Barcelona, warm and pleasant. Still no rain, Ed. Uh, only in Spain can a strawberry be a potato, says Ron. Yeah, the uh, strawberry industry in the spotlight at the moment. I think a lot of people are starting to, as we saw before, starting to question maybe the, the practices of that strawberry industry because it's a very popular fruit uh, not only here in Spain, but also in other European countries. Big strawberry consumers are the Germans, and they like their strawberries. And uh, Spain been producing them, and now people are starting to question, but where, where's all the water coming from? Yes, we'll see. Uh, Kevin, also coming in from uh, Martos, had to be rushed back to the hospital for three points of Dracula's best, much better now, uh, anemia. Good to see you're uh, on the right track there, Kevin. Got your uh, uh, blood. Three pints of Dracula's best. Hope all is well. And uh, you are recovering. Shiny, shiny things coming in from uh, Paris. Pouring. It's still hot outside. Feels like Florida. Yeah, that's that uh, muggy weather, right? Diffie. Send a $10 
Super Chat Stew's Barber. Well, that's exactly how much it cost, uh, Diffie. 10 euros, not $10, 10 euros was the price of my haircut. I gave him a, a 1 euro 50 tip. I was feeling generous yesterday, and I gave him a, a nice uh, 150 tip uh, for the uh, haircut. So I'm happy with it. Nico coming in as well from the Delta del Ebro, 27 degrees there. Mostly sunny saludos. Dave coming in, uh, fr- uh, going, to ca- ca- going to Catalonia or coming to Catalonia next week for three months. Can't wait, says Dave. Thanks for all the information. No worries, Dave. Good to see you uh, in the chat and uh, hope you enjoy your trip to Spain. Debbie coming in from Niceville, Florida. Is Niceville a nice place? Is th- that's the, what I would like to know, Debbie. Is it a nice place? Niceville in Florida. Uh, hunting dogs are well treated in Gran Canaria, apparently. It's not a matter of laws, but education. The situation has changed for good where I live in the last 10 years. Yeah, absolutely, it's a question of education, uh, Jose Antonio. It doesn't matter how many laws are in place. If you don't have a, uh, a population that can understand uh, what they should be doing and what they need to be doing, then uh, no law will work. You're absolutely right there. Now, I'm just going to put the little like icon on, on the uh, screen. I can see it. We're nearly up to 100. We're, we're edging up to 100. So 91, 92 currently. So if we hit that like button, you might be like number 100. So we'll see if we can crack the ton if you hit that one there. Jay, enjoying a day off. Uh, great video and audio quality. Thank you very much, uh, Jay. Something that I have worked on uh, is the audio quality and the video quality. I like to try to get both as uh, good as possible because nothing worse than a video with bad sound and uh, after that nothing worse than a video with a bad image but sound very important thanks for watching uh let's have a look here let's have a look here uh diffie never had an id card in australia uh, did have a dan murphy's and a bunnings card well that's probably all you need down there just show you dan murphy's uh, card if you're not familiar with dan murphy's it's a a bottle shop or a uh, liquor store, if you like, if you're watching in North America or an off-license, if you're watching in the UK. Uh, Dan Murphy's one of the biggest uh, uh, bottle shops in Australia, I believe. And, of course, uh, Diffie with his loyalty card for that establishment. But uh, no one's got ID cards in Australia. That's right. Ed, uh, what's this one here? Uh, uh, chat going on between Ed and another viewer. Um DNI hasn't got a fingerprint any longer. Just the picture and the basic info. Thanks, Erica. I couldn't remember if it did or not. I uh, doubted myself when I said that, but uh, thanks for pointing that out. I remember there used to be a, a thumbprint on the back of it, but obviously, as Erica points out, that is no longer the case, or uh, at least not on uh, Erica's last one, probably. Let's have a look here. Um, Iggy coming in from a cool high end. Don't worry. Uh, if someone says they would rather put pins in their eyes, tell them where the closest pin shop is. Uh, Iggy enjoys the content, debate, and news channel. Thank you very much, Iggy. I think um, in general, just because of the um, uh, the thumb up to thumb down ratio, uh, it's fairly uh, positive, the thumbs up. So I'll keep on doing what I'm doing. No need to change. There's plenty of other content on the internet for people that don't like it. Plenty, plenty. Go and watch it. What else we got going on here? Let's have a look. Uh, Diffie saying that the asthma has returned. Absolutely, that's why I thought would be the case with that uh, smoke. Uh, Manuel coming in from Valencia. Uh, feels like summer, but waiting for that proper rainy season still. Yeah, don't know whether we'll get it anymore, uh, Manuel. Might have to wait until um, after summer for the rains now. Don't know, but we'll see if we get that uh, rainy summer that some people are predicting. Philadelphia, the smoke has gone, says uh, Alan. Thank you very much, Alan, for that. Uh, Getting a uh, smoke update in real time. No name is in the chat. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Uh, No name. Hope you are well. Uh, Mark is coming in from Boston, Massachusetts. Was Boston affected by the smoke? Don't know. Baking in London, says Maureen. Absolutely baking in 31 degrees. Um, Yeah, I can imagine that's it. I'm sure that the parks there would be full of people with their uh, shirts off, getting a bit of sun on their body. Going to be a 
A few red faces having a pint later on tonight. No doubt. No doubt there will be a few red faces having a pint uh, that have been out in the sun today. <clears throat> Gino's in the chat as well, coming in from uh, Canada. Hello, Gino. I hope you're well. Uh, Piers coming in from Galifia. 18 degrees outside. Thanks for the update. Thanks, Piers, for watching. Thank you. Uh, Tony coming in from uh, Shallow, I think that is, near Halon Valley. 30 degrees to, uh, Celsius there. Nice picture of the pool there also. Uh, Norm coming in as well. Long time listener, first time commentator. Uh, saludos. Thanks, uh, Norm, for that. Good to see you here. Thanks for uh, uh, making yourself um, known in the chat. Belinda's in the chat. Seriously, move on if you don't like the content. I purposely come uh, to see uh, Stu for his take. There we go. Thanks, uh, Belinda, for that. And uh, like I said, there's plenty of other content on the internet. Don't come on here and, uh, you know, leave a comment for no reason. You know, go watch something else. Uh, Ken's tried a few needles in his eyes. Keep talking about, <laughs> keep up talking about the weather and politics. Thanks, uh, Ken, for that. Uh, what else we got going on here? Gigi walked the entire distance. There we go. Uh, I got out of the Madrid suburbs, of course, heading up the foothills into the mountains. Lovely start to the Camino. So Gigi starting from Madrid. It's a, a long walk, I imagine, to get to Santiago de Compostela. But Gigi's on her way after a backpack mishap as we saw earlier in the week. Um, Manuel uh, is from Valencia. So my Spanish dad is very anti-Catalonia, and he argues that in Barcelona they only teach schools in Catalan. Is that true? Yeah, uh, a lot of people uh, outside of Catalonia are anti-Catalonia, uh, <laughs> Manuel, uh, for what's been going on over the last uh, couple of decades. Uh, I, to be honest, I don't know because I don't live in Catalonia. I'm sure that uh, some of the uh, Catalonian uh, viewers or viewers that are in Catalonia can answer the question better, Manuel. But here in Madrid, we get told that all the time, that there is a linguistic uh, war going on there, that they don't want to teach uh, some subjects in Spanish, and then the Spanish government tries to make them to get at least 25% of subjects in Spanish or in Castellano Spanish, and there's this linguistic uh, back and forth going on. So it could be true, but again, we'll get uh, somebody like uh, Erica or Ed who are in Catalonia to uh, let us know. Let's have a look here. Spanish strawberries on sale in France, big and gorgeous. I think they're sending the nicest ones up here, probably, probably. You get some nice ones here, but I haven't seen them in the supermarket for a while, so I'm not sure whether they're still uh, being sold or whether they're just being imported. Now the season here, uh, the strong strawberry season might be over. Don't know, but I haven't seen them recently. Cherries seem to be the number one thing uh, catching my eye in, super in the fruit section at the supermarket currently. Uh, nice town, no, nice folks, Niceville, there we go, come for a visit, we'll show you around. Yeah, I, I might, um, was it Florida, did you say, Niceville? Yeah, I might be hitting Florida in the near future, you never know. Richard coming in from uh, Gandia, retired there, uh, absolutely loving it. You know, I imagine it's a nice part of the world, Gandia, uh, except in August when it's full of uh, madrileños. Yes, Iglesia Bautista is in the chat as well. Great show, uh, great show. Keep up the work, like your perspective. Thank you very much for that. What else? Let's have a look here. Yes, Boston affected by the uh, wildfires. Jet stream from Canada. There we go. I thought that might have been the case. That was that area up there in the uh, north. Uh, what is it? The uh, north east, is it, of the United States? Hmm. Winter breeze in uh, Australia, 31. Yeah, that's what I said before, Diffie, but um, I have been in London where it was about 28, I think, one time that I was there, and I'm, I will say it was hot. 28 degrees in London was uh, hot, whereas 28 degrees in Perth, uh, you know, that would just be a, a cold summer's day, 28. People would be complaining about the weather if it was 28. If it doesn't get into the 30s in Perth in the summer, it's not really a, a summer. Uh, what else? Renan coming in from uh, LA. Thank you, uh, Renan. Good to see you here. And Dave uh, likes the uh, objective political overviews, especially as my Catalan girlfriend is very independista. So you help us get more of a balanced understanding, LOL. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, Dave. Maybe your girlfriend can let us know about the, uh, the uh, language uh, issues in the schools, if there is one or whether it's just the Madrid press that uh, give us a different point of view. Don't know. 
But uh, I try to be objective. Uh, I try to be. Uh, but uh, good to see that you guys like the channel. Uh, Northeast. Thanks, Mark, for that. I was just trying to get my geography right in my mind before I uh, said it was, uh, before I said exactly what it was. Now, we're up to the, what time is it? 34 minute mark. It's uh, five past eight. So I'm going to cut this uh, live stream short. The uh, chat section, I've more or less come up to the, I've um, come to the end of the chat section. So I'm going to uh, stop it here. John's asking one final question. If I'm stopped in a Spanish Reg car, what docs do I need to show? Um, well, the absolute fundamental documents that you need, of course, are a driver's license. You have to have one of those. You also have to have your permiso de circulación, which is like a green uh, piece of paper. If you're, if it's an older vehicle, John, you're going to have to have some type of proof of the uh, uh, vehicle inspection test, the ITV. Uh, you probably also need to have your uh, local council uh, tax, uh, vehicle tax paid as well, and uh, uh, proof of that. And uh, insurance, I don't think you need to have a copy of the insurance because if, if the person that pulls you over, they'll just be able to get on the radio and, 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 say, and know if you've got the insurance up to date. But permiso de circulación, which is a green document, driver's license, of course, ITV, if, it's, uh, if your car is older than uh, four years, and also that uh, council tax, okay? It's called the Impuesto de Vehículos de Tracción, or something, I don't know what it's called, IT something or other. Uh, and uh, those are the ones that you need definitely. So uh, make sure that you got those in the uh, glove box, and you should be all right. Um, Shiny, shiny, saying that in Catalonia they teach uh, subjects in Catalan. They also teach Castellano and English. In Galicia they do the same, but Galego, of co uh, in course, rather than Catalan. There we go. So yes, subjects in uh, Catalonia. I mean, it makes sense, doesn't it? I mean, it's a, it's a place that has its own language. Galicia has its own language. Basque country has its own language. Valencia they have a language. Balearic Islands they have a language. So they uh, do have the the, uh, the need, of course, to uh, learn the. Uh, local language. The problem comes from, and I'll just say this before we finish, a lot of people in Madrid complain that, or other parts of Spain, not only Madrid, I say Madrid because that's where I am, but people that don't speak those other languages complain that there's a type of uh, linguistic, uh, what's the word, a type of um, um, barrier, let's say, because a lot of jobs in Catalonia, they're going to ask you to speak Catalan. Some jobs in the in the Basque country, public jobs, they're going to ask you to have a, a level of Basque. And of course, people in this part of Spain don't learn another language except for Castellano and maybe a foreign language, English, French, German, etc. So there's no learning of Galician, there's no learning of Basque, there's no learning of Catalan, whereas the people in Catalonia, of course, they learn Catalan. And then, of course, they'll speak Castellano Spanish as well. I've never met a person in Catalonia that is not bilingual. Don't know the level uh, in some of the smaller towns. Maybe they're not 100% fluent like a person in Castilla Leon would be. But uh, when it comes to communicating in both languages, pretty fluent. But uh, it is a linguistic debate that's going on at, at a political level. And uh, that's one of the reasons why... Uh, I think Vox uh, got a little bit of popularity in some of the Catalonian towns in the last municipal elections because of this linguistic issue, of course, and also the uh, other political issues as well going on there. Now, I'm going to wrap the live stream up. Thank you very much for watching. It's been a pleasure as always. I'll be back on Monday with another live stream, so tune in for Monday. Thanks for participating in the chat section. Thanks for watching the live stream this evening. I'll see you guys again, as I said, on Monday. Regular video tomorrow, I think, providing my camera and microphone works. Regular video tomorrow, so uh, stay tuned for that one as well. Hasta luego, hasta entonces, buen fin de semana.